What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. My review of episode four of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. Listen, it took me almost three whole days to finish watching this episode. This thing was a pain to watch. Um, She-Hulk is just a borderline, like, waste of time in a way. Um, the show is hard to watch. It doesn't really have any redeeming qualities. It's not funny. It's supposed to be a comedy, and it really isn't. Um, and there's just not a lot going on for it. It's There's no real story yet, right? Like, it's just like little snippets, kind of like a day in the life of a superhero, which could be interesting, but it's not. Um, and She-Hulk is no longer a character. Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk, for the purposes of this show, does not have a character. She is merely an avatar for the writer's room. Like, the women in this writer's room who wrote this show, She-Hulk is just kind of a collection of all their experiences, their own individual, you know, way of looking at the world. She's not her own character in any sense of the word. That's why you may kind of experience this kind of, like, duplicity with this character. Like, she's not really focused you know it's like well who is this person i don't know yet she just seems like a random kind of character um get to these court trials right like we got another court trial where wong is suing a magician which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever um the entire premise of why he's suing the magician is just dumb uh these court trials are a joke and they are to be taken as such okay I'm actually all right with that from a certain sense because it's obviously that the writers aren't taking this show or this character or their own writing seriously. So yeah, just treat everything like night court. That's how I would do it. Like, all right, we're just gonna put a big red nose on the judge and just go for it, right? Because we're just, it's just, it's a comedy that wants to take itself like a serious comedy and it's it's just bad writing ultimately it just comes down to bad writing and then once again they drag wong back into this thing like what did wong ever do to you guys man they keep dragging wong out here and just continue to destroy his character i'm gonna have a hard time taking this character seriously of the character of wong seriously from now on like it would be one thing if they had did something silly with wong like in a post credit scene you know that would have been all right you know it's like okay it's kind of a one-off you know wong's done some jokes and stuff in the doctor strange movie so all right fine but i mean they're just dude, this is just character butchery like they're just destroying them right if they just did one thing with wong like all right we just did like a quick little post credit scene and just brushed it off like that that would have been fine but it's just like scene after scene after scene with this guy is just terrible. Like, the, you know, they, they're making a mockery of his character in the last two episodes in a row. And it's just unbelievable that they aren't aware of the brand damage that they're doing to his character. Now I'm kind of worried about what are they going to do with Matt Murdock and Daredevil, you know, because they got him to play with. And, oh, we get to play with Daredevil. What can we do with them? I'm afraid. I don't know if I'm going to like this or if I'm going to like Charlie Cox being this character in this farce of a show. Now, if there was actually one thing that I thought worked kind of well was the whole dating segments. Like all of that stuff was actually all right to me. It's really, really interesting to see like how these women writers view dating in their 30s, you know, because that's what she said. Dating in my 30s is hard. That kind of introspection into you know the women in their 30s dating lives and everything like that it's kind of interesting you know and i thought that you know them dealing with dating apps and that whole aspect of their lives you know i i actually thought that that was done well i'm not saying that it was made the show any better or worse i'm just saying that you know okay that was somewhat interesting it wasn't like god awful horrible but you know the rest of the show happened <laughs> But really, like I said from the first episode that we saw, like this is just a feminist show for feminists. It's really not made with the average MCU viewer in mind. And so from a certain point of view, you could say like having this type of show is just like a nothing burger. It's like no big deal. There's really no story we're following. It's just like the day to day mundane life of a superhero lawyer. There could be something that you can do fun with that, but it's not, it's a poorly conceived show with no real through line. It's got poor character writing. It's a focus on being self-aware and meta and they mess all of that stuff up too because the fourth wall which is supposed to be fun it's like the characters are like kind of sitting next to you in the audience kind of nudging you yeah you see it now yeah, you get what i'm saying that's what the fourth wall is supposed to be it's supposed to be nudging you in the ribs telling you much how much fun we're all having and literally the writers of this show are just using that to visit their frustrations of the world on you right like this show is just turned into one big bitch session 
where it's like you can almost imagine little teenage girls like sitting around in their pajamas you know eating chocolates and popcorn and telling each other how much they hate everything like that's literally what this show is it's the kind of shit that used to send their little brothers like screaming to their rooms into the sanctuary of you know video games and comic books and action figures and all of that stuff and the stuff that their sisters weren't interested in right they're down there talking about their girl problems i'm up in here playing punch out and enjoying myself you know battling out with my action figures that's what we did as young kids and now the sisters have kind of co-opted you know our fun stuff too right <laughs> you know and it's like oh you don't want to share your toys it's like nah it's not that i don't mind sharing my toys i don't have a problem sharing my toys with the girls but don't come in here trying to flip the table you know Come in here and do what we doing. This is how we play with our stuff. Come in here and play the way we're playing. It was just fine the way it was, but now we got to come in here and take it over. Now, the good news at the end of the day is you don't have to watch She-Hulk. You don't have to watch anything in the MCU, as many have elected to do. Um, the MCU quality is really falling off of a cliff, and the overabundance, honestly, of the shows and the movies has just really reduced this franchise to watered down, poor storytelling and poor characterization because they're just trying to force things out as fast as possible. But the bad news is, even if you don't watch She Hulk, even if you don't watch Marvel or any entertainment at all, um, Hollywood has so much cachet that they can and still destroy your childhood and destroy your favorite pastimes, the things that. That you grew up loving and just turn it into utter garbage and that's basically what's happened with she-hulk finishing out this thing is going to be a challenge um there's so many other good shows and things out there for me to watch and talk about house of the dragon dropped today i uh, just can't wait to get into that that show is amazing right now it's doing a great job with character development something that this particular show over here can't do whatsoever but go ahead leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comments below and thanks for watching see you next time